It's right up my street, it's my boulevard, it's right up my straza, oh my god, it's garden right up there, oh, it's right up my podcast. Ooh. Welcome to Right Up My Podcast. This is Gwen Watson. And this is Kate White. And this is the podcast in which we talk to people about the things that are up their strata that make them feel good. And each week we explore a different topic, um, something that makes us and makes other people feel good. And we have a go. We try it out and we find out how we personally respond and if it does actually help us at all. Do you know what? When we get to the episode where we're going to submerge ourselves into a bath of ice... I think that's your turn to take one for the team, please. <laughs> I'm genuinely really excited about that. I think that's going to really work for me. All right, brilliant. Anyway, anyway. Anyway, so this week, this week is something that I reckon both of us can do. I'm totally up for this one. What's, what is the topic this week, Kate? So this week, we're going to be exploring ASMR, which we've heard more and more about in the media and in various other places. People talking about how it helps with general relaxation, with anxiety, with insomnia and even more specific things like pain relief. So we wanted to find out a little bit more about what ASMR was all about. And don't worry if you've never heard of ASMR, because here is a little thing we prepared earlier. Ah, it's right up my podcast. Gwen, tell us all, what does ASMR stand for? Well, I'm very pleased you asked, and I'm going to read this just so I don't fuck it up. It is Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. Now, for people listening who are probably none the clearer as to what that is, we're going to read out the Wikipedia explanation of what ASMR is, see if it shines a little bit of light on it. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Go for it. Okay. Autonomous sensory meridian response, sometimes referred to as autosensory meridian response, is an experience characterised by a static-like or tingling sensation on the skin that typically begins on the scalp and moves down the back of the neck and the upper spine. ASMR signifies the subjective experience of low-grade euphoria. Hello. Hello. Characterised by a combination of positive feelings and a distinct static-like tingling sensation on the skin and is commonly triggered by specific audio or auditory, it says, or visual stimuli and less commonly by intentional attention control. Firstly, what the hell is intentional attention control? Not a bloody clue. That's another podcast. Yep. Um, so I, I, I feel like it's something that's been around probably for many years, but has suddenly got a lot bigger. Definitely. I've definitely seen it crop up in programmes and on the radio quite a bit, people talking about it. Yeah. I very first came across ASMR one night, one dark, lonely night. Uh -huh. <laughs> there were so many of those. <laughs> when I was just trawling through the internet and I don't know how it came up. But um, suddenly I was faced with a woman sat in her bedroom eating pickles and people kind of all going a bit mad for it on the internet. And I was like, what are the humans doing now? <laughs> I don't understand. It doesn't take that much digging down into the internet to come up with some crazy batshit stuff. Now, you haven't seen Pickle Lady before, have you, Kate? No. Tell me more about Pickle Lady. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to show you, I'm going to play you and our lovely listener a bit of Pickle Lady right now. Let's do it. Get ready. Hello, hello, hello. I should just explain that she's scraping her fake fingernails across the so lid. I'm to eat some pickles. I'm just mesmerised. She sat in the corner of her bedroom. I should point out that she could be in her 50s. But she's got a lot of makeup on. These pickles are so <laughs> she's, she's holding, holding up. She's holding up a jar of pickles. She's got full makeup on like she's going to the club. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's uh, she's prepared for this. That's a massive gherkin, isn't it? It's like a monster emerging from the deep. Oof. God, it looks so freaking good. I mean, does, does it? it? Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Make it stop, Gwen. Make it stop. <laughs> you know, I'm so, Kate's currently got both her hands over her face. I just, I hate 
it, when you're in a restaurant, you can hear people smacking their lips together and eating. Yeah. This is my hell. My sister gets to the point of rage by hearing people eat. I want to go to some of the um, YouTube comments. Kate Dancer says, my dad, what are you watching? Me, a lady eating pickles. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Gwen, how many views has she got? She's this? had over 30 million views. That is crazy. 258,000 likes. Equally, though, 109,000 dislikes. I think it's one of those things that's going to be divisive. Either you you get the sensation or it just revolts you. I don't think there's a middle ground. Stephen says, Loki came here to see how weird this shit is, but I'm dead ass relaxed now. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Oh, oh it's, it's the lip smacking. And... Yeah, she's going for it. I mean, blimey. She knows what she's good at and she is doing it well. I tell you what, though, it's not just humans who are eating for ASMR pleasure. Wait for this. All right, this is the cat who got the cream. Literally licking cream off her finger. I feel a bit weird about this one. Oh, oh I, yeah. What's that? This cat is being presented with a range of different foods. OK, this is licking a watermelon. Oh, the tongues, the long, rough tongues. This is a cat licking an ice lolly. She said the cat is wearing a beautiful little bib. <laughs> that cat is eating better than most humans. Yeah, I envy this cat's diet. You don't want to be getting euphor euphoric from this while watching it, do you? No. I think the sound of the cat purring would be more relaxing than all of the licky, rough tongue sounds. Oi. OK, I think that's what? enough of cat. Yeah. I genuinely feel a bit nauseous after watching that. <laughs> I'm not sure this is the world for me, this <laughs> ASMR mouth noises. <laughs> Come on, hit me with something else. I need my spirits to be lifted. All right. I'm going to take you straight to the king of ASMR. OK. This is ASMR zeitgeist. In this one... He's helping you sleep, study, relax and tingle. That is much nicer. So he's just stroking two wooden combs with his fingers. Which does actually sound a bit like a cat purring as well. It does. What is happening today? I feel like I've got a cat in my ear. It's quite mesmerising to watch that as well. Sorry, listener, you can't see what we're seeing, but it's quite mesmerising. It is. So, I mean, the whole point of ASMR, and this is what we're going to do when we do the... when we experiment later, is that you've got to be listening in in headphones. Yes. Because their, spe their microphones are set up to... Um, like he just had there, like two microphones, like a binaural. So you've got your left and your right ear. So as he's like, he's now tapping a little wooden box going around the microphone. So when you're listening in your headphones, it feels like it is going around your head. Wow. And that he's actually doing it to you. What I like about this one as well is he, you feel like he's in a professional studio setup, not sat in the corner of his bedroom. So it doesn't feel quite so weird. And it helps that he's not bad on the eye. I have to admit, this might be why I'm enjoying this one a bit more than the previous <laughs> ones that we've watched. <laughs> He's a good-looking man. Just relax. I, I will relax. do anything you tell me to do, sir. Home sweet insomniacs, tingle lovers. Welcome back to our trigger lab. Zeitgeist. 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 Because do you know what he does? Zeitgeist. At that moment. Yeah. Because I've listened to him before, and what he does at that moment is he... Um, because they've got the binaural um, headphones. Yeah. So they record one on one side first yeah. and then they record on the other side. Yeah. So then sometimes he will play it at the same time so you get his voice going into both ears at the same time. Oh, and yeah. I've definitely tingled. Have you? Oh, it's my just goodness. Such intense experience. Yeah. He's like a doctor, isn't he? He's, he's got, like... He's wearing latex gloves to do this, which... Yes. Actually, this he's cleaning your ears. So when you're listening to this with headphones, it does feel like he's doing all these things to you. Blimey. <laughs> Zeitgeist. Who knew? Yeah. He's good, isn't he? He is really good. He um, is a whole different league to pickle lady and cat feeding person. As far as the reaction I have to those sounds. What you mean they are they don't come close to the reactions mm. you have to Mr. Not Zeitgeist. E not even close. Whereas Mr. Zeitgeist, I get it. And I'm not even wearing headphones right now, so I'm not getting the full experience. Oh, yeah. 
just wait till you're laid in the dark when one night when your husband's away. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to Zeitgeist. Yeah, watching can, him. <laughs> you can clean out my ear canals anytime, Zeitgeist. <laughs> now, there's one more person that I think we should listen to before we move on from this little introduction to ASMR. <laughs> this is someone who doesn't take it quite so seriously. I've done a job here and my trousers. Disgusting. <laughs> Hello there, my name is Luz Capaldi. I'm a singer-songwriter from Scotland. Today, I'm going to be talking you through some of my favourite Scottish slang words. And I'm going to be doing it in the form of ASMR because I want to see how many perverts on the internet I can make climax. <laughs> in the rear. Jobby. <laughs> Peely Wally. ASMR things that I've watched online, they seem to really... I'm up the chewing. Bobby. <laughs> it's so funny. It is well <laughs> worth looking that up. It's called Lewis Capaldi Experiments with ASMR. Look that video up and watch it because it's hysterical. So there you go. ASMR. It's for you, for me, and for perverts everywhere. <laughs> so, Kate, you went and spoke to somebody who knows a thing or two about a thing or two. I did. So before we go and properly sit down and try this and listen to different ASMR recordings and find out how we respond to it ourselves, I wanted to find out a bit more about what's actually going on in our brains and in our bodies and get a bit more of a, uh, an expert understanding about ASMR. Mm -hmm. So I went and had a chat with a very interesting lady called Julia Puerio, who is a lecturer at the University of Essex in the Department of Psychology. And her area of interest is that she researches links between cognition and emotion, so basically between thinking and feeling. And she has a particular focus on ASMR. What's really interesting about ASMR is this idea that you can have a sound or a sight that essentially triggers a feeling of touch in you. So the feeling of ASMR is like getting a head massage. So it feels almost like you're being touched, but what commonly triggers that feeling of touch is sound and sight. So listen to somebody whisper or tap or somebody moving their hands in a really gentle way. So there's definitely a connection between those kinds of ASMR triggers and the feeling of touch. So what have you been doing as part of that research? Really, the first step with ASMR was to try and establish whether it is a genuine experience in people that claim to be experiencing it, because there really hasn't been all that much research on ASMR at all. Um, and it's only really been very recently that people have started to look into it. So the first paper was published in 2015 on ASMR. And what we found was that People who say they experience ASMR when they watch ASMR videos show significant reductions in their heart rate. Um, and this is something that is greater for people who experience ASMR compared to people who don't on average. So actually what's interesting is that people, even if you don't experience ASMR, you will on average show a reduction in your heart rate when you watch ASMR videos. And this might be to do with the fact that they're quite, you know, soft and, and relaxing in general. Even if you're not getting the tingling or the kind of the weird, those weird responses, you are still getting this reduction in heart rate. On average. So this is on average when in our sample of participants. So we showed people very kind of quite mundane things, um, not like some of the role play videos that um, you see on AS, you know, ASMR YouTube sites. What I would say is that it probably really depends on the kind of videos um, that people are watching. But in our study, at least, on average, people who don't experience ASMR also show reductions in heart rate. But those reductions are just not as prominent as people who experience it. And then the people who experience ASMR also experience this, this tingling response. Because, um, yeah, as you've touched on, there's lots of different types of ASMR videos out there, some more arousing than others, I imagine, in different ways. But the whole being revolted by eating, I get that. The ASMR videos where people are smacking their lips and chewing, <laughs> oh, it, I can't stand it. I can't bear yeah. it. 
Whereas yeah. other people, it, they don't seem to have this revulsion to that. In the way that you've described it, it seems like some of the ASMR triggers would produce something like misophonia, which literally means hatred of sound. So common misophonia triggers would be things like lip smacking and eating sounds and tapping and people can get really angry and distressed by these kinds of sounds. So you might think that, OK, well, if these same sounds are what are producing ASMR and this relaxing, tingling sensation in people, then you might expect people who experience ASMR to be less likely to experience misophonia. But actually, there's research to suggest the opposite. So if you experience ASMR, you're also more likely to experience misophonia. So things like eating sounds in one context for the same person can produce feelings of relaxation and calm. And in other contexts can produce feelings like you've just described, which are you know, feelings of anger or frustration. So it's not just the case that these triggers will universally result in relaxation and the ASMR response in people. My co-host Gwen, she found she was listening to a particular ASMR video and every time she listened to this one ASMR artist, she got a dead leg. Really odd, isn't it? And it wasn't anything to do with the way she was sitting or... Um, you know, there wasn't any consistency in that, but she always experienced this dead leg sensation in the same leg when she listened to this one ASMR video. Oh. She's really odd. Yeah, and does she does she experience ASMR? She does. She does. She's really she likes it. She she gets that pleasurable relaxation effect. So a lot of people commonly describe ASMR as you you know starting at the back of the head. Um, and spreading down throughout the rest of the body. But people do also say things like they feel it in their limbs and and also different specific areas um, on their body as well. So it's not just the case that necessarily people will feel it in that specific location of the head anyway. So that could be an example of an ASMR response that's happening at a different location in the body to what people normally report. Yeah, well, I'll send send her your way. You can wire her up, see what's actually going on in Gwen's brain. We were reading some comments by some people who had been watching some of these videos and a few people there was a common theme that people said at first they they were almost a bit repulsed by it but then when they put their headphones on and listen to it in that way that it's often recorded to be listened to with the different the left and the right recorded separately then they really got into the 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 swing of things and that that was key to them enjoying it and experiencing a response to it one thing that i would say that's quite important for people to understand is you know if they don't experience asmr is that asmr is different to asmr videos they're not one and the same thing so uh, the feeling of asmr existed before youtube so people would experience these kind of feelings in real life um but what youtube does and these youtube videos do is allow people to experience asmr on demand But some people find it really difficult to experience ASMR virtually through YouTube videos because they feel that it's somehow not natural. So there's there's kind of two sides to it in the sense that, yes, some people will find through YouTube that they can, you know, get really get into the ASMR experience, whereas other people find it quite inauthentic and they prefer to experience it in daily life. You made a really interesting point there that ASMR and of course it does it existed before it became this youtube phenomenon so how did it become this um uh, this this big thing that it is now with all these youtubes with these artists with these millions of hits that these people um get on their content it's been really interesting to see the sort of rise of asmr originally um somebody on Um, an internet forum in 2009 I think was discussing this strange feeling that they had in their head you know with particular sounds it was called something like strange sounds that feel good and so somebody had started talking about it and that led to discussions about you know or I also experienced this kind of really pleasant tingling sensation when people whisper for example and that eventually led to a YouTube video which started the Whispering Community, um, which I think was in 2000, 2009. Um, and then the term ASMR was coined in 2010 by Jennifer Allen. And then once there was a common term to describe this feeling that people said that they also experienced. And you'll see from people, from comments on YouTube, that people are really using these videos to help with things like insomnia and anxiety and things like that. So people are really, you you know, tapping into this. And if it wasn't for the internet, we wouldn't have all of this. So it's it's really fascinating. Hello, I'm a happy little penguin, a happy little penguin boy. 
I bring a lot of penguin joy. Do I really have to tell you more? No, I'm just a happy little penguin, a flippity flappity bird. I don't care for hustle and bustle or talking on mobile phones. Yes, I am just a happy little penguin, a happy little penguin. Yes, a happy little penguin. One of the um, videos that we were watching, the lady who does it, who's got massive following, she actually was introduced to ASMR um, to help with chronic pain that she was experiencing. And she found that really beneficial in her life. So what are the, the health benefits then? You've already mentioned about it lowering the heart rate. How would it be helping with chronic pain? Yeah, I mean, it's a really good question and we don't quite yet understand the mechanisms of, you know, of, of how it's happening. So as you mentioned, we've, we've shown reductions in heart rate. So that could be one way that it is helping with things like anxiety. And if you repeatedly expose yourself to things like this, it might be a kind of, you know, a therapy. But we really don't have the kind of clinical evidence to suggest that it is something that will work. And probably it will um, it will work most effectively for people who experience ASMR. So whether it, ASMR is something that can be used broadly for therapeutic benefit, it is kind of an open question. Another thing that I'm kind of particularly interested in looking at is um, not necessarily mechanisms of action for pain, but how ASMR supports good sleep. So I think the most common thing that people use ASMR for is sleep. On the one hand, it might be that, well, ASMR is useful because it helps to put you in a, a state of relaxation, which then facilitates um, the onset of sleep. So it's easier to get to sleep. Um, or it could be that ASMR is distracting from the kinds of pre-sleep thoughts that prevent you from getting to sleep. So rumination, worry and things like that. Um, but another question that I've got, which I think is really interesting, is whether ASMR actually improves sleep, the quality of sleep. So does it just work because it helps you get to sleep or does it actually improve the quality of your sleep and, and the, the sleep cycles that you have? And these are really empirical questions in the same way as you might say, well, how does ASMR help with chronic pain? What is it about ASMR that is the key ingredient to making it helpful for certain people, for certain conditions? And those are really kind of questions that we need to answer with research, I think. Yeah, so there's still so much you don't know about it. Years of research ahead. Do you experience it? Yeah, so I experience it and that, that's really my where my interest in it, you know, I first kind of got motivated to explore it because it is something that I've always experienced, but I didn't realise that other people experienced it. And then, you know, when I found out that it was a thing, I also realised that there wasn't any research on it and that people also had a big, big problem trying to believe that it was a real thing. So um, a lot of the time people, if they don't experience something, they find it really difficult to believe. And that's, you know, it's a reflection of the fact that we only have access to our own minds and our own experiences. And it can be really difficult to try and understand an experience that you don't personally have. So something like synesthesia, for example, where you taste words, you know, I don't experience that. And I find it really difficult to imagine experiencing that. But I know from the scientific work that's happened that's happened over the past you know hundreds of years on synesthesia that it's a real thing and that it can shed light on really important kind of differences in the way that the brain is organized so i feel like a similar path is going to happen for asmr in, in that we will start to accept asmr as a, as a genuine thing and that actually understanding why some people experience this and, and why some people don't can lead to really interesting insights in, in the, the structure of the brain, the mind and emotion. The one thing that I would say that is quite important is is to kind of demystify this idea that ASMR is somehow a sexual thing. Um, so a lot of times people who see these videos and the intimate nature of them, assume if they don't experience ASMR, they assume that somehow ASMR is a sexual feeling. And actually, we there's no evidence to suggest that it's sexual, but that's a common misconception. Any of your listeners who might go, oh, I wonder what ASMR is like, and they Google it and they watch a video perhaps, and they think that it's somehow a fetish thing um it's not um it's a very complex interesting emotional response yeah okay and that is a good point to make because 
inevitably there are videos out there where the content is sexually orientated but that's nothing to do uh, actually with the ASMR that's just to do with them um, what is going on screen people watch these videos and they're like what <laughs> I was not expecting that. particularly if someone said to them you know just look up ASMR it'll really relax you well, and and people think that people who experience ASMR are somehow perverse and actually <laughs> ASMR quite often if you ask people about their their first ASMR experiences it'll be something really mundane like a teacher explaining something or um, somebody tracing letters on their back or really simple encounters that are in no way sexual. So I think that the the YouTube community and the videos that have gained quite a lot of popularity might somehow skew perceptions of the experience of ASMR and the conditions that trigger it. Yeah. I used to go to a hairdresser's where they had this little metal fret, not, um, wire contraption that they would just put over your head <laughs> i think it was called an orgasmo oh yeah so that that is a that is a, a way that i quite often describe the feeling of asmr so i have one of those that vibrates and i'm like if you want to know what the feeling of asmr is like it's like this feeling except you get it through hearing things and seeing things and that's really good um, uh, um, t- tagline for ASMR actually feeling sound that really sums it yeah. up yeah if it's if it's feeling sound but it's also it's not just sound it's quite often a layering of different triggers that intensifies it and this is why the role play videos can be so effective because they involve a layering of sa- different kinds of sounds and also um, visual stimuli like soft hand movements and the close personal attention element and the simulation of potential touch and that's why these videos, are, you know, they, they involve a complex layering of lots of different triggers to intensify the effect. Have you ever tried to do it? Have you ever tried to um, do your own ASMR audio? No, because I don't think I'm, I'm a very relaxing person. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't see myself as somebody who would trigger ASMR in other people. So I don't think that my voice is particularly relaxing or that, uh, the way that I move is is in, yeah. conducive to ASMR. I could be wrong. Um, and I think that different people are triggered by different things. But no, it's not something that I've ever tried because I feel like I'm intrinsically not a very ASMR person. Yeah. Um, and actually, when you meet... So I've met um, an ASMR artist and I was really intrigued when I met her to see whether she would naturally be very ASMR-y. So whether just her natural way of being was quite triggering. And it, and it was. She was very kind of soft-spoken and delicate. And, and she was triggering even when she wasn't trying to be triggering. The most successful ASMR artists, this is just personal opinion, are ones who are, are naturally like that. And it feels more authentic. And I think that authenticity is quite key to the ASMR response for a lot of people. So I think people quite often find it difficult to experience ASMR if they don't feel like the person is naturally like that or authentically like that. And they're just putting on an act. That was a really fascinating interview. Yeah. Isn't our brain amazing that... So, yeah, well, she was talking about the crossing over of senses, and that is essentially what this is, isn't it? It's that yes. you're getting a physical response to an auditory stimulation. So you're kind of... You're feeling like you're being touched just through having sounds pumped into your ear holes. Yeah, absolutely. We, we were joking reading the comments earlier, but I have read a lot of comments on YouTube, and so many people use it to get to sleep or so many people use it to de-stress and to just tune out and relax for a bit. It does it does seem that for a wide number of people it has it definitely does make you feel good, doesn't it? Definitely, definitely. But what I found from taking a bit of a deep dive into the world of ASMR videos is that there are so many different types. Some have the exact opposite reaction to me. I think I already Aye. mentioned this. And actually, the ones that give me that whew, relaxation feeling are the ones is when I'm not watching a video. 
I find the video distracting. Yes, okay. And they do say on the videos, like ASMR Zeitgeist, <laughs> hello, sir. Um, he does say, like, close your eyes, doesn't he? Yeah. Because they do do quite elaborate videos as well, and you can watch them in their in their little kind of studio stroke clinic, creating all the sounds. But I'm, a, I'm with you, actually. I, I don't know, it's a weird thing, because actually sometimes you want to know how they're making the noise. Yeah, that's true. And you look, like one, one guy I was listening to the other day, he was creating this amazing, like, gongy kind of noise. And I was like, what is he doing? He was, he was touching a, a waffle iron and like something, and, and he looked like Thor. So you, there, was, <laughs> there was like an urge to kind of watch him while he was doing it. But yeah, you're right. I think um, when you've got your eyes closed and you're just focusing on the sounds, that's when it's really triggering, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Do you get triggered? Because me. So I didn't think I did. I didn't think it had any impact on me. But then when I did that, when I turned, you know, turned the video away, so I wasn't watching it, when I had my headphones in, that's a massive game changer. I definitely, on some of the videos, the ones that, the sounds that trigger me is the, the comb flicking along the, what are they called? The, what's it oh, called yeah. in a comb? You know, flicking along the comb. Oh, fingers, the teeth, or, the teeth. The teeth, yes, flicking along the teeth of the comb or in a wood block, you know, those kind of serrated wood blocks flicking up and down that, that kind of sound. Mm. I get a cold feeling in my scalp, like someone's pouring cold water over me and like a trickly cold feeling coming down my scalp. Oh, yeah. But then on anything that's too organic-y, too lip smacky, too, too chewy, I have the opposite reaction. My heart rate goes up. I want to break <laughs> something. <laughs> so it's a fine line I, for me. <laughs> yeah, and it's interesting because because um, we're voiceover artists, aren't we? So we we I personally, if I hear um, a dehydrated mouth, that you can hear the saliva clicks. Like in voiceover, oh. you have to edit all of that out, so it's the absolute worst thing you can listen to. So I <laughs> yeah. think I've got a predisposed kind of um, a vol revulsion towards it. What about other? Um, ASMR sounds do you get a response to it I tell you what I really enjoy actually is somebody whispering in my ear do you and so a lot of them they do have people whispering and um and I find I find I get, it can be a little bit arousing as well really? and of course there is there is the ASMR it, of course with most things <laughs> with most things in well in the world it does there, there is it does cross over into porn and there's a whole ASMR <laughs> porn world which is people whispering in your ears and doing various things I will admit actually when I, I did a bit of a deep dive on ASMR the other day as well and I ended up <laughs> with like what sounded like a 17 year old Korean boy um, <laughs> licking my ears and <laughs> And it was really nice. And then afterwards, I just felt a bit seedy. And I think I felt seedy for most of the day. <laughs> just... what, I, what I quite enjoy as well that she was talking about is the personal attention um, ASMR because it's somebody doing something to you. Yeah. So um, there was one the other day where he's cutting your hair. And so you can hear the scissors all around your hair. You can hear the comb over your hair. And he's talking to you like he's doing it to you yeah and I think that's that's tapping into something else I think that's tapping into like me being a single woman lying in, on my own <laughs> in my bed like having and the same with the boyfriend ASMRs there's loads of that where you've got people pretending to tuck you in for the night or telling you that you look lovely yeah. there's those kind of um there's something really comforting in those is okay that's really interesting because I was watching some of those because you'd mentioned them and I was like right I'm going to check out what this what this is all about and actually, did you not do you not feel when you listen to those and then you get to the end of the video and turn it off and there's not a boyfriend tucking you in? <laughs> and I don't mean to be mean at all. I'm not meaning it in a mean way, but doesn't that do you then feel a little bit sad and lonely at the end <laughs> of that? <laughs> well, it, it kind of feels like it's highlighting something that's not there. That's missing. Even if it's for a minute of gratification and relaxation, it then enhances the what's missing post listening yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well i i mean it, and also i feel like you're then listening to it for a different reason yeah like because and you can see in the comments people have been one of them has been listening to this boyfriend asmr for about four years <laughs> she's like <laughs> it's the longest relationship i've ever had <laughs> and you kind of think um but they are doing it to feel relaxed and go to sleep but i wonder if 
it's all about I wonder if it is about the physical triggers or if it is about feeling less alone or feeling comforted you're being yeah. comforted by somebody I am interested in the fact that people get pain relief from it like you were saying pickle lady that's why yeah. she started out and that and that people I can I can see how the tingly sensation can make you feel good and make you maybe tip you off into going to sleep yes but yeah, I still don't fully understand how it gives you pain relief, I guess. No, I don't. And actually talking to Julia, she felt like there was still so much they had to learn about it that they haven't got kind of solid scientific understanding of why it might have that impact as far as pain relief goes on somebody. Mm. Um, yeah, it's definitely still something where there's so much to find out. Isn't that, aren't our bodies amazing? And our minds they are. amazing? They are. Um, and I think going, basically, oh yeah, go on. No, no, I was just going to say, just going back to the kind of the role play ones that you found mm. and that they're out there, sorry, not that you found, that we've been watching. <laughs> that I've discovered. That you've discovered in a secret <laughs> <brought> the world, <laughs> secret corner of the internet. <laughs> my, my initial reaction in watching them, because some of them, the artist poses you a question and then waits and then responds to your imaginary answer. Those oh. ones I've, I find really weird. But I did find one this morning where the... So this is going to sound weird, but actually was really relaxing. Nothing's and weird here, Kate. It's a no. safe space. <laughs> it's just you and me, Gwen, right? Yeah. No one's going to judge me. No. Um, so the setup for it was that it was for relaxation and anxiety, and that's what watching this video is going to help you with. And um, she was touching the computer screen that she was recording into. She was doing all the ASMR mouth noises, but in a nice way, not in a sloppy tongue way, but in a clicky <laughs> math way <laughs> and she was touching the computer screen as if it was your face and she was saying right I'm just going to dial down the anxiety I'm just going to twist this little dial here and do this little knob here does that feel better oh no okay I'm just going to dial this knob here and it was like she was giving you a robot face massage and then she was ah. acting like she was teasing strings of stress out I can't describe it it was the most relaxing thing I've ever watched. And I could feel my face, oh. the muscles in my face, just relaxing. Wow. Do you know what? I fully expected you to go, um, and I thought she was an absolute nutter, and I switched <laughs> it off. So I'm actually really surprised that you did find that really relaxing. So it works, right? Yeah, because up to then, I'd been a real cynic, like, ah, it's all, it's all weird. But that really relaxed me. Oh. Yeah. I have to say also... Um, not wanting to bring it back down to a sexual level, but, <laughs> but like we were saying, <laughs> why not? Um, like we were saying about um, ASMR zeitgeist, uh, but, but, but with a lot of the ladies as well, they are all quite attractive, aren't they? And yeah. they do have lovely voices. And like this guy that I was watching the other day who looked like Thor, <laughs> and I, <laughs> or rather looked like, um, you know, that's Chris Australian. Hemsworth. Exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yes. And, um, and I just thought he wasn't actually particularly good at it. Like he kept thunking the microphone and <laughs> and, like, and like his voice kept popping into the microphone as well, which really takes you out of the experience. But every, all the ladies were writing, hello, Thor. <laughs> and he had like 11,000 likes. I thought, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's doing something right. Yeah, he's definitely doing something right. So, yeah, is it something that you might um, continue listening to? Is it something that you might decide if you need to de-stress or you need help going to sleep is it something that you might ch turn to Kate I don't think so I think I would rather listen to waves crashing against the shore or dolphins chirruping at each other you know those those apps mm. like calm or headspace those kind of apps that would be way more relaxing to me mm. the only videos if I was going to it would have to be the really professional ones where they're in a studio and it looks all professionally done. The ones where it's some Thor lookalike in his bedroom and you can see his dirty boxes on the floor in the corner and he's just talking into his his Apple headphone mic. Those ones are just like, nah, 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 this is amateur hour. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Um, You know, I think it's a yes from me. I've I've definitely had a variety of experiences on my ASMR journey, and I, and e and even now I do still feel like I'm doing something slightly odd or weird or naughty when I'm lying there listening to it. Like I feel <laughs> if somebody was to walk in and go, "What are you listening to?" I'd be like, "Oh, let me explain." <laughs> but the other day, 
I just, it was first thing in the morning, I'd woken up, I wasn't quite ready to engage with the day and I thought I wanted to do something relaxing, like I wanted to listen to a meditation or yeah. um, an inspirational kind of YouTube video or something yeah. and I thought, oh, I'll check out ASMR Zeitgeist, see what he's got going on and um, I was lying there with my headphones on and my eyes closed and it was phenomenal. Like I wasn't getting the huge tingling, but I was definitely getting a really great physical response to the sounds. And oh, I um, love that. it did really feel like I could feel it between my ears. And he says at one point, it's like I'm giving your brain a, a wash or something. Yeah. It is like he was cleaning my brain. And it was just, I just thought this is such a lovely way to spend um half an hour like yes. some of these videos are an hour or two hours or four hours um i mean if you got the time yeah go for it but um it i would definitely do it yeah it's definitely relaxing definitely soothing and nothing and like nothing else and um it makes you feel good yeah and i think that possibly out of interest maybe for research sake i might listen to another boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> purely for scientific purposes though right yeah. <laughs> I'd probably draw the line at 17-year-old Korean boys, though. <laughs> Just to be on the safe side. And that brings us to the end of this episode all about ASMR. Thank you so much for listening. And a massive thank you to our lovely team, which is Andy Turvey, our great editor, Andrew Grimes, on the music, and Kat, who is our lovely content editor. Thank you, lovely people. And if you want to get in touch, then you can email us at writeupmypodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, you can send us any ideas for future episodes. Tell us the things that make you feel good or just give us any feedback. We would love to hear from you. We sure will. And in the meantime, keep trying new things to make you feel good. Bye bye. Tell me, did you like the podcast, Brian? No. Oh. If unlike Brian you thought our podcast was really great Then don't hold back, like, subscribe and tell your mate But if like Brian you thought our podcast wasn't fun Then just keep quiet, don't feel the need to tell anyone Oh, We'd love to hear from you if you've got some thoughts to share Such rich and lovely views that all should be aware of but I hope you liked our podcast and you thought it was really great. And if you did, like, subscribe and tell your mate. Because we don't need grumpy pants bringing everybody down. No, we don't need negative Nellies making people frown. No. So I hope you liked our podcast and you thought it was really great and if you did like subscribe and tell your mate